Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of e-commerce explosive growth. We've got a very interesting one today because my team and I have really dug into the data to find how Kylie Jenner built a $1 billion empire at just 21 years old. So really crazy stuff. And some of the secrets that we found, you're going to be able to take and implement on your business, whether that's an agency or an e-commerce business to really scale very profitably and very fast. So very excited for this and let's get right into it. So here we are inside my computer and without further ado, let's get right into this presentation. It's going to be very juicy. Honestly, some of the secrets that we're going to be revealing today is really going to expose how should we just build an incredible empire in a pretty saturated uh, market. So very excited for this, how Kylie Jenner built a $1 billion empire at 21 years old. Um, so in this presentation, I will cover the top three counterintuitive marketing strategies that Kylie Jenner uses to build one of the fastest growing beauty brands Kylie Cosmetics, and how you can use this same growth sequence to scale up your business in a, a pretty saturated market. Now, here is what we're going to cover. Ask who, not how. The secret sauce to Kylie's explosive success in beating her competitors and dominated a crowded beauty niche. And look, I know what many of you are thinking. Well, she just had it handed to her by her family, and that is just simply not the case. Yes, obviously, she got an amazing start simply because she had built an incredible audience, but she was still very smart about how she decided to grow her business. And if we actually compare her to some of the brands that have come out of the Kardashian family, like for example, KKW Beauty, which is Kim Kardashian's a beauty brand, right? They're making one third of the revenue Kylie uh, Cosmetics is doing. So she's definitely done something right, uh, and uh, that's what we're gonna be discussing today. Now, the second thing is content marketing, how Kylie uses content strategy to produce just a loyal tribe of fans while building a very strong connection. And the final thing is building exclusivity with social media. The third key, Kylie Cosmetics uses to generate $360 million in just two years. Right now, they're averaging around $300 million uh, in revenue a year um, and hype up every single launch and ensure that almost every, pretty much every single launch is just completely sold out. So very exciting stuff. Um, now. The first thing is asking who, not how. One of the things that Kylie did amazingly well, and, and this is what I preach, especially in the in any business, but also especially in the agency model, which is finding out who knows, right? Instead of trying to learn how to do things, Kylie reached out to the right people, the people who already knew how to do it, people who were A players in their field. And this is what a lot of beginner entrepreneurs I failed to realize. And the reason why I can speak about this is because it happened to me, especially my first venture as, a, as an entrepreneur, my, the first brand that I, that I ever started uh, when I was 16, which was an e-commerce streetwear brand. You know, I was, I was trying to do everything myself, right? Uh, because I was really attached to the, to the mission and the vision, and it was almost my baby, right? I, I didn't want anyone to get involved with it. Um, but you have to realize that you have to seek out the people who are much better at certain areas than you, right? The same thing applies for the agency. I see so many people waste so much freaking time trying to become an expert at Facebook ads, trying to become an expert at email marketing. And now don't get me wrong, at this point, I do consider my, uh, myself an expert in those areas. That's only because I got the ball rolling by trusting people that were already experts at it, okay? Especially when it comes to Facebook ads, uh, you guys will run into a catch-22 situation if you try to go it alone. And the reason why that is because to really be great with Facebook ads, you need to be in the trenches day in and day out. You actually need to spend money on ads. Right, because it's more of the practice that makes you really good at it, right? It's kind of like playing football or playing tennis or whatever it is, right? You actually have to do the thing to get really good. Yeah, sure, you can watch a course and, and learn all these strategies and skills, right? But what actually makes you really good, actually practicing the thing, right? And so what happens to a lot of the beginners who try to go the, either the freelancer or contractor way or, or try to you know build an agency and actually it's just themselves are doing everything uh, themselves, right? What happens when you're trying to do Facebook ads yourself is simply no one really trusts. What happens is number one, you haven't really built authority in that service as yourself, right? I'm not talking about an agency as a freelancer. Obviously, if you're from Facebook ads and they're speaking to you, right? You are the person who's going to be running the Facebook ads as opposed to an agency. If you're speaking to the agency owner, that person is not necessarily going to be the person running your Facebook ads, right? And so what happens is you don't have the experience, right? And even if they do decide to bring you on board, you can't get them results because you don't have the practice. And since you can't get them results, then your partnership is gonna to come to a halt very early in the process, right? And so you're not gonna get the time to actually practice because to get really good with it and practice, you need to spend money on ads, right? And the money usually comes from other clients. And so it's just this weird situation. And, and that's, you know, going back to, to the, the slideshow, 
That is what Kylie Jenner did very well, which is she basically understood, okay, I need these people in the team, which is also a massive skill that should not be underestimated. The, the fact that you can bring in people and, and that you can put them in the places where they can thrive and that you can create an environment for that team to thrive. I feel like that is a skill that is not often given enough credit, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that, that is what she did. She also delegated, right? So only 12 full-time employees. She basically outsourced manufacturing, sales, and fulfillment, right? She was taking action. She didn't wait for everything to be perfect. This is a really good trait of a beginner entrepreneur who just wants to get stuff done, right? She didn't wait to have this, you know, cool facility. I, I think at this point she does have like her own facilities and, and now she has put a lot of, a lot more time into the, the actual uh, sourcing of the ingredients and the actual formulas in, in, in the products. But once she was started, she valued progression over perfection, which is very important, okay? And uh, the third thing is focus on the market. Allowed her to focus on the, mar uh, the gap in the market and creating a strong product fit. And if you guys watched episode two of this series uh, with uh, Gymshark, one of the ways they got a massive edge in the market is that they understood the market very well, right? They understood what their customers needed because they were in the market themselves, right? Before they even started the brand. This also applies to Kylie Jenner. The fact that she was already in the market herself, she already used a ton of products for uh, her lips and you know, a ton of beauty products, right? And so she knew what the gap in the market was. She knew what her audience needed from all the feedback that she'd gotten from all these people commenting on her post and you know talking about her, all this stuff, right? And so when she went to market, she almost had perfect product fit. Again, it's not just because she's Kylie Jenner. Yes, that plays a massive role. I'll be talking about that in just a second. But there has been a ton of celebrities in the past who have tried to start their uh, brand and they simply just didn't have a, a good product, right? And sure, you can get an edge, especially at the start, if you have a big personal brand, if you are a famous person, because people will just flock to it, right? And, and they'll just buy it because of you. But if you don't have a good product, trust me, those people are not coming back. You're going to get that rep and your company is probably just going to go out of business, which has happened to a ton of celebrities. So that is really the third thing that Kylie Jenner did. Now, on to the content marketing side of things. The first thing is she told an amazing story, right? And she did that through content. She did that through uh, publications, blogs, etc., etc. right? as she focused on relating to her audience with a common insecurity and creating a solution-driven product. And one of the things that helped her massively, and one of the things that we do for a lot of our clients especially, is that she had a face to the brand so people could identify with that human aspect, with that human component. And that is very, very important in 2020, right? If you're watching this and you have an e-commerce brand, one of the things that we tell our clients all the time is make sure that you humanize the brand as much as possible. If you don't want to put a face to the brand, the founder face to the brand, then at least talk about the team, right? Use words like I, or use words like we, right? The main thing here, especially when it comes to social media, people want to connect with people, right? Humans connect with humans. Humans do not connect with businesses. Humans do not really connect with corporations. And so the more a uh, human element you have when, when it comes to your brand, and the more you can brand it as, hey, we are this group of people, we are this collective, we, uh, uh, we, are, we are this person. This person has certain insecurities. The, the reason why this person started this brand is because her own insecurities, right? It's much easier to build trust that way with your audience because it's coming from a place of authenticity. And Kylie really walked the talk, right? She was insecure about her lips. I don't really know the full story with all the details, but what I know and, and the research that we've done is she was insecure about her lips, that thus she created a brand. And that is a very congruent uh, br uh, story, brand story, right? That people can actually relate to, that people can trust, and that people actually believe, right? And so that is the... Sec uh, the, the first thing, the second thing is user generated content. Pictures showing her fans and other influencers using products. It creates report, it creates uh, trust. And, and that is one of the things that, that Kylie Jenner did very well, is that unlike a lot of the big beauty brands like MAC, like uh, L'Oreal, like Pantene, all this stuff, right? They tend to use really good looking uh, models and really you know famous models, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what Kylie Jenner did very well is the, the pictures that she uses are not as curated as uh, as with you know this other big brand, right? And she shines a spotlight on her fans, on the users of the product, and that is massive, especially for a social media brand nowadays. So that is really the second thing. The third thing is solution-based content with a catch, right? She became an authority in the space by giving people beauty tips, right? She was the the beauty go-to person, okay? And the reason why that is very powerful is because when someone has consumed your free content, right? and they've gotten so much value from you, right? And they, they see your face on a daily basis. When they decide to buy and when they shift from their current frame to the buyer frame, who do you think they're gonna buy products from? The person that they've been seeing every single day almost, right? And that have added a ton of value to their lives already, completely for free, absolutely, completely upside, right? And so that is the third thing. And the fourth thing is massive organic traffic. 
Kylie's reach is massive and she gets millions of eyeballs for free, right? And so while other big brands in the space that have been around for the longest time are paying for that exact same traffic, right? Kylie Jenner just completely gets it for free. And that is a you know that, that is the biggest edge that she really has, right? To an extent, we saw this with Gymshark and even High Smile, right? The fact that they tapped into brand ambassadors, sure that brand ambassador may have cost them money, right? But that cost was almost insignificant compared to just the reach that align, uh, aligning themselves with these brand ambassadors had for their brands. One of the things that Kylie Jenner did very well is that she would constantly show you know her, herself using the products and you know, try you know putting the products on, on her skin or whatever it is right and that is a very easy way to sell a product how to use tutorials seeing the product in action is a very powerful way of selling the product okay so that is content marketing the next thing is a big thumbs up if you're enjoying this video go ahead and drop a big thumbs up youtube just loves when that thing turns blue so i'd really appreciate it and uh, without further ado let's get right back into the video the third and final point is social media marketing and as always this is the section that i love the most and that we at mobile love the most um but one of the things that she did amazingly well uh, was building the hype right she would warm up leads with messaging that romanticizes uh, their, uh, her products and promotes conversion right and this is incredibly important in the social media marketing realm right and kind of the, the way we approach it at mobile c if for example we have a uh, black friday coming up right what we'll do is you know one week or, or even two weeks usually it's around 10 to 15 days we'll start the campaigns then right and we'll start building that the hype on cold traffic with different creatives right you can have creatives that say you know 10 days out or five days out right very time sensitive and what we're doing there is just trying to get traffic and eyeballs on the content and then on the actual big day we'll run our retargeting campaigns right and so we can get all that traffic where cpms are the highest right and where our competitors are, are tapping into cold traffic right we what we do is we tap into the retargeting traffic from all the people that have engaged with the content during that you know those seven days those 10 days those 15 days right and so our conversions are much cheaper our conversions are much higher as well because we've built the hype around the drop and so everything it just comes into place not only the cheaper conversions but people have also uh, become accustomed to the drop uh, it's built hype and we have a multi-channel uh, drop and, and just congruence, right? And so that is one of the things that Kylie Jenner did amazingly well and that still does amazingly well, right? That she is able to build a lot of hype for drops, right? She's able to also collaborate with, you know, her other people like her sisters and other stuff, um, you know, cross-pollinating all those audiences. And so she builds a lot of buzz around new products. And instead of just launching new products every single week, she focuses on products with a purpose and then she builds up the hype for them uh, having almost uh, sold out um, uh, drops every, every single time. So that is the first thing. And the second thing is the problem solution approach. So what she does very well, and, and I mentioned this uh, early on, is that she knows what the problems and the insecurities that her audience are facing, right? And so she can address this very effectively. For example, how to get lifts like Kylie Jenner, right? She understands that just like her, a lot of women are probably going through that insecurity of not having the lifts that they want, right? And Kylie Jenner is always preaching that the way to get her lips right is by using her products and so she connects that problem with the solution and she makes it very clear that the vehicle to get from point a to point b right is to use her product and uh, that's really what at the end of the day that's really what sales comes down to and that she does that very well and the final final thing is real scarcity so she drives up demand with limited product releases and restocks which very simply leads to a lot of sold outs and also leads to people wanting more and building even more hype around the brand. And some of the biggest brands use this just like, for example, Supreme is, is a really good example of a company that does this all the time, right? And uh, and that's kind of what builds a lot of hype around these brands because it's almost impossible to get your hands on the product, right? And so scarcity kicks in, the value of the products uh, goes higher, right? And, uh, and not only that, but it attracts a lot of eyeballs uh, to the brand. So that is that for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Kylie Cosmetics and how Kylie Jenner built this $1 billion empire. I crazy stuff and uh, hopefully the secrets uh, that we revealed in this presentation, you're gonna be able to take, implement on either your e-commerce brand or your agency to take things up to the next level. So if you enjoyed this video, as always, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any questions, any comments you may have. I'll be sure to check this out. Also, if you want to see my team and I break down a specific brand of, of your choice, whatever it is, go ahead and leave it down below and we'll consider it. And the final thing is if you haven't joined the free private mentor community, the client closers, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. Either we're talking sales, scaling secrets, e-commerce agency, how to get results for e-commerce clients, and a bunch of other really, really cool stuff. So if you want to join that, go ahead and check out the link in bio. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.